I've been aware of that forever, but I didn't... Uh, just happened to, happened to mention that there was some type of symbolism related to the Wizard of Oz, and I'd never heard that before. I couldn't believe how somehow I had missed this. And so I jumped on the web and immediately saw that this was uh, had been the, the talk in uh, uh, economics academia for about 20 years. And so uh, I said, oh, yeah, this is the perfect vehicle. Because to, to me, the Money Masters, well, I've always been looking for a, a way to refilm it because it, we did it so long ago. It was even before digital. I mean, it was filmed in high eight, for example. And it's just getting, you know, a little worn out looking, if you ask me. And also it's too long, and I couldn't figure out, you know, how can we do this in a shorter format so it's a more effective political tool? And that's, I think, what, what we've done here. We filmed uh, The Secret of Oz in HD. Well, I mean, The Money Masters is an authoritative classic, and it's deep in history and the whole system. I mean, I, I can't believe you're kind of knocking your masterpiece there. <laughs> well, I just uh, I, I think this is a more effective political tool. I mean, it, it takes somebody pretty dedicated to sit down for three hours and 23 minutes, you know. Now, th this you can sit down and spend 100 minutes. And uh, and get the same story. So, well, it uh, does. I mean, it does look crisp because it's shot in high def. But I mean, I just got to commend all of it because I know how instrumental. But I am the type of guy that will sit down and watch C-SPAN for three hours. So I guess I get your point. Uh, but uh, but you travel all over the world for this. Uh, but, uh, let's talk about some more of what the film covers. I want to say something first. First of all, about. Uh I want people to be hopeful here, and uh, you know I think the the good the good part that's going on right now is these guys always get way over arrogant with their power. I think Obama, the whole Obama thing, has, they've totally overplayed their hand. Uh, they're they're trying to bite off way too much. The American people is way hip to this whole thing, and uh, they're going to crush them. The bad news is, although we we might win, we might push out a lot of the bad guys. The bankers. Have wrecked the hell out of us. We might push a lot of them out out of the next election. Uh, you know, uh, that's still not going to fix it unless we we fix the monetary system. Unless unless we fix the debt problem, we're never going to fix this uh, on, uh, under the current scheme of things. We have to go at uh, the debt money system and the uh, and the ability of the banks to create ninety eight percent of our money. And you went to Iceland uh, to show how the same groups are robbing them. Same groups in Greece. Look at. Greece, they're telling him you've got to give up your pensions, everything, Germany, Spain, Portugal, and the people don't owe this money. And then on top of it, if you look at the case of Greece, 600 plus islands, their roads, their infrastructure, having to give it to the very private banks that set them up, they should yeah. be, they should be we'll arresting. Never We'll never beat them in those two countries. There's only two countries where we have a shot, and that's the United States and Iceland. I've been in Iceland. The reason we have a shot there is because the people are mad. Iceland is the home of the Vikings. They're very proud of their country, and they are mad right now. You know what, what I found out once I got in country? That not only uh, is, are, were their interest rates indexed to inflation, but their principal on their mortgages is indexed to inflation. And so after they... they they uh, killed the hell out of the Icelandic krona. It, it doubled and tripled these pay people's house payments. They're getting foreclosed on, kicked out of their houses. Yeah, There's the bankers wrote it just to rob everybody. Describe what you saw on the ground in Iceland. Uh, well, that that's what I'm saying. So there's now a movement that uh, has sprung up, which go goes out and surrounds a person's house that's about to be foreclosed on, and they've been very successful. They just, uh, 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 an absurdist party just took control of the, the capital city of Rinkavink, uh, called the Best Party, and uh, we formed a, a, mo a monetary reform working group uh, when we were over in Iceland, or helped to form it, and uh, we're, we're presenting an idea called the Best Bank based on the Bank of North Dakota to them next week, we have an excellent chance. I spoke to, I spoke to three members of Parliament when I, when I was there. We have an excellent chance of bringing about a right money system in Iceland because these people are so mad and so fiercely independent. And I, I urge, uh, urge you, Alex, and everybody in the sound of my voice to support Icelandic products at this point just to, to help them... Uh, to be sure that Americans are going to support them in this effort. And the way you can do that is you can go to the Nordic Store, nordicstore.com. Uh, Whole Foods also uh, c carries a lot of Icelandic products. Uh, and, and uh, you know, buy Icelandic, buy Icelandic. Yeah, because they are literally the Alamo in the fight against the bankers. They are the front line. 
and they are standing up against this evil when every other country is falling. Yeah, that's right, and and they're one of the smallest economies, and so it's going to be a battle royal. But they're they're willing to fight it, and America has to support them. And the way we the way we can really support them is to buy their products. Well, as you said, time is running out for the bankers, uh, but they have well, already ruined our economy so badly. Briefly describe, uh, because I know you have this at the end of the Money Masters and and the similar plan in this one. You know, a very well researched program to extricate ourselves from this fraudulent money system and get back on a constitutional system uh, that built this nation. Until the bankers took over in 1913, we had almost zero inflation, sometimes deflation, with our currencies. Our savings were strong and on average a 10.1 percent yearly growth rate in the economy. Uh, we don't have that anymore. So we built our nation without the income tax that came the same year as the Federal Reserve. Yeah, you know, that's part of the Communist Manifesto these bankers created. That's right, the bankers created communism to sucker everybody back into slavery. Communism is serfdom. Uh, globalism is treason. I mean, let's go over the, uh, your plan, the plan, uh, to uh, rectify things. Uh, well, uh, ba basically, you have to uh, yeah, eliminate the ability. Number one, job one, is to eliminate the ability of governments to borrow. It should be absolute. National debt should be absolutely illegal. And there's there's a couple of, of approaches that we can use to do that. Uh, you can you can create uh, debt free money, issue it uh, from Congress, uh, and uh, issue it in, into the economy as, as the new money comes in, and we. Pay pay off the national debt with the new money. We gradually raise bank reserve requirements. So at the end, we have no national debt, and uh, we have banks only able to loan out money they actually have. That way, banks no longer can create money, uh, and uh, the, uh, only the government creates money. We don't want to eliminate commercial banks, just as they've done uh, with the Bank of North Dakota. The State Bank of North Dakota works in cooperation with the local banking community. The local banking community loves them. The, the State Bank of North Dakota kind of serves as a mini Federal Reserve, completely outside of the federal system. Uh, this, this model can be used in every state in the Union and can go a long way towards eliminating every state deficit in this country. I urge everybody to go on the State Bank of North Dakota website and uh, probably in every state in this nation right now, there are people in your state attempting to bring about at the legis in the state legislature uh, the State Bank of North Dakota concept. Uh, find them. If you can't find them, start your own group. That's, that's the thing that, that But we let's can look at the other side of this. Uh, because of industrialization, because of technology, we could all be living like literal kings. And when you read what Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, the U.N., Club of Rome, they all finance it. They say, we want carbon tax to shut down the industrialized society. They know that humanity tends to be wealthy now, and then that makes us not dependent on them and the government the banks control and so they actively admit they've created a black hole monetary system that makes us poor and they've they've made uh, this type of uh, austerity a beautiful thing but but not for them for us so they've they've dolled up their neo serfdom and feudalism as something beautiful and good so if we don't stop them their goal is to make us debt slaves i mean these are premeditated wicked people can you speak to your research along that line oh, their their goal is to return us to a state of serfdom i mean and that that is the the key uh, uh, fight but the through all the history of humanity is whether or not humanity will be able to escape serfdom. And that's what that's why government is such a precious gift, because it is the only thing that stands between us and serfdom. They want to eliminate that. That's why that, that's why they, they love to corrupt government and make government look bad. And that's why Congress has such low ratings. You know, we we and if we just eliminate And they say privatize it, but that's another form of corporate governance. See, we only see enemies as nations like Russia or China, uh, but, but really it's a corporate takeover. That's the treason. I am for small government, but a t I'm for our republic that then guards us because we are the government and guards our freedom. Centralization of power at every level is a bad thing. Decentralization of power at every level is, is almost always a great thing. And that's, that's what the whole concept of state governments in, in the U.S. federal system, that the states, go, states 
remain sovereign, that the states have plenty of power. And, of course, that's what Obama is directly attacking. We have to decentralize power. We have to get the U.S. out of the U.N. for the most part, get it out of all these international banking agreements, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Decentralization is a good thing. Well, you're absolutely right, and I think people are beginning to discover that because I've seen the banks push a kind of fake libertarianism of, oh, see, government's bad, let us privatize it. But that's not privatization to take roads we built with our money and then give it to bankers to put toll roads on it. That's not free market. Well, you know, another another thing we could do in the interim period, this Tobin tax is really a great thing. That's, that hits at the heart of the high-frequency trading. If you just put a 1% tax on uh, all, of, all of these high-frequency trades, you know, it could, it could raise approximately between 5 and $7 trillion for the U.S. economy.